Hello and welcome to Outside Xbox, your watching show of the week. I'm Mike. And I'm Jane. And this week I returned to Thedas for Dragon Age Inquisition's DLC epilogue, Trespasser. How was that? I don't know. I got to LA and then I didn't leave the spa. Oh my god, we've got tiny cheese cheeses on, on our eyes. face. <laughs> they are cheeses. Amazing. What? <laughs> there are a few spa cheese. <laughs> what is oh wrong with you? Was that cheese? You've been going to the wrong spas, my friend. I don't have time for spas. I've been busy playing Elite Dangerous, which has finally come to Xbox One. Oh, for real this time. Look, are you not going to do this? No. Shh. Tell me about Elite. OK, so Spaceflight Adventure Elite Dangerous is the first full game to emerge from the Xbox Game Preview Programme, which allows fans to support, i.e. pay for, games before they're quite finished. And it turns out Frontier Developments hasn't just run off to Aruba with all your money. Elite was updated throughout its stretch in game preview. The Federation welcomes you to CQC. The biggest addition was the close quarters combat multiplayer mode, which debuted on Xbox One and allowed you to die in the uncaring vacuum of space without having to travel tens of light years for the privilege. But this full release of Elite Dangerous is now in line with the feature set of the PC version of the game. That means you can now fly in co-op wings with your friends rather than plodding the trade routes alone, which wasn't possible when the game first landed in game preview. You can also join a faction to take part in the same power play metagame that PC gamers are participating in. You see, along with platform parity, your actions will now feed into a single universe that's shared with PC and Mac players. You won't actually be able to crash an Xbox spaceship into a PC spaceship, but the economy and political power balance will shift depending on the actions of players on all platforms. Be warned though, there's nothing like a galaxy-wide power struggle to reveal some of the less admirable traits in the human psyche. What have you sort of learnt about your player base since the factions have been introduced? <laughs> well, they, they, they really like slavery, but it's actually changing <laughs> because one of the um, faction leaders, which I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised at, there's a, uh, is, is really pretty. She's young, she's, um, but she's anti-slavery. So a lot of the players have now flipped and are now anti-slavery. So let me get this straight. They were super into slavery until a pretty lady told them not to be. No wonder when we meet aliens, they always think we're total dicks. Still, power play is the thing that makes you feel significant in a game that's designed to make you feel insignificant. Elite's galaxy map is staggering in its scale, with so many stars that astronomers clearly got bored of naming them properly. I wouldn't bother making the centre of the galaxy the first stop on your sightseeing tour, by the way. There are very few gas stations there, and once you're out of fuel, you're doomed to drift in the infinite abyss of space, spending your final hours contemplating just what an idiot you are. As for the future of Elite Dangerous, well, the PC version is gearing up for Horizons, a season of paid DLC. The first instalment, Planetary Landings, will allow you to touch down on the surface of realistically sized airless planets and moons, and trundle around in a rover called the Scarab, completing missions on a much more human scale. No word on if or when the Xbox version will get these planetary landings, but we've got our fingers crossed. And do you know how difficult that is in a spacesuit? It's pretty realistic, you have to conserve your fuel, otherwise you just sort of drift off into space and freeze to death. It's a pretty embarrassing way to go for a space adventurer. I don't know, I've died in way more embarrassing ways in space. Because, though I may appear to be a bold and sexy space captain who will eventually meet his demise wrestling an evil alien overlord in the heart of a neutron star, I usually end up doing the space equivalent of slipping on a banana peel and falling out of the airlock, such as in any one of these least heroic video game space deaths. Do you want to get out of here? My apartment is nearby and... I want you alone. Samara's loyalty mission in Mass Effect 2 has her send Commander Shepard into Afterlife Nightclub on Omega to spring a trap for her daughter Morinth. This feat he accomplishes by punching people, punching more people, and then dancing like this so he can get her alone. I mean, who could resist? I'll dance next to you. If you want to think we're dancing together, go ahead. I do want to think that. S already knows Morinth is an Ardat Yakshi, which is an Asari with a genetic mutation that causes her to overload during sex and explode the brains of her sex partner, but still Shep has the option to side with Morinth and bring her onto his crew. Mother. Shepard being Shepard, he also has the option to have sex with her, despite this clearly being the worst idea of all time and space. You have the Prothean cipher in your head. You died and came back. There's no one like you. You and I can share something so intense so deep it will change your life. Oh yeah, all the others died, but probably because they just weren't as sexy as me, Commander Shepard. Let's do this. Embrace 
Empress Eternity. Ah, oh, this is embarrassing. I don't usually die during, I swear. Space is a harsh and unforgiving place where the slightest wrong move can mean your instant death. No, wait, not space. I'm thinking of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy text adventure from 1984, a game in which the slightest wrong move can mean your instant death. For example, if you fail to eat a packet of peanuts at the exact right time, you die horribly of protein loss on a Vogon spaceship as a side effect of teleportation. At least it means you don't have to go on to solve the Babelfish puzzle, so silver lining? Space Quest 3 is full of ludicrous, embarrassing ways for hero Roger Wilco to end his space adventuring career, from cutting yourself on something sharp to pole vaulting with a thermal detonator in your pocket to being terrible at pretending to be a janitor, then suffocating inside a big block of green jello. Most embarrassing, however, has to be opening the display case for an Antarian slime devil at the World of Wonders. Yes, it looks cute, but this is Space Quest. You can probably guess what's going to happen. USG Ishimura is full of very real horrors how to kill Isaac Clarke in gruesome, limb-removey ways. You, yes, exactly. That's why it's all the more embarrassing that, in my game at least, Isaac spends a lot of his time getting killed by spaceship doors. Come on, Isaac, you were just fighting a space monster with swords for arms. You should be able to handle an automatic door. Apparently not. I wonder if Isaac and Roger Wilco are related. For a space death that combines terror and humiliation, you can't be going for a nice spacewalk, then accidentally drifting off forever, irretrievably into the void, alone into the indifferent emptiness of the vacuum, all because you forgot to attach your safety tether or spent the last of your jetpack fuel doing loop the loops. It would be much like the experience of this hapless Kerbal astronaut, who will have a lot of time between now and when his oxygen runs out to think about how many cooler ways there are to die in space than this. Now it's time to see what you've been writing in the comments and choosing as your Diamond Dog's codenames. I mean, your choice, buddy. First up, your comments on this video about the weapons more likely to kill you than your enemies. There are several good reasons not to use a hat as a throwing weapon. One, hats are not known for being sharp or heavy or aerodynamic or having any of the properties you usually want in a throwing weapon. Xylarch's code begs to differ, saying, what do you mean hats aren't a viable weapon? Clearly Kung Lao did not receive that memo. Yeah, there's always someone who takes it too far. <laughs> There! Yeah. The T-Man 9898 empathises. I'm sure we're all guilty of trying to be clever by throwing a grenade through a small gap, but have it bouncing back at us while we deeply sigh at our inevitable fate. Right! Thank you! And I'm sure we've all thrown a grenade at the start of a stealth mission, alerting every guard in the level. Wow, we really shouldn't be allowed to have grenades. Grenade out! Uh oh Oh, I thought everyone was dead. Oh no! Oh, did we, we blow up all the bikes? bikes? Every single oh, bike! That might that have wasn't been... Me. My grenade. And here's Paddy Blake with some history for us, saying, The Fat Man is based on a real thing known as the Davy Crockett or recoilless rifle. Turns out launching miniature nukes is a bad idea. Shoulda listened to us, late 1950s US military. Speaking of terrible ideas from the Fallout universe, here are your comments on this video about weird ass Fallout cults. Glad to see you're finally awake. I can't believe they made you do that stuff. Stupid ceremony. Hunter Rodriguez has a suggestion of his own, saying, Ooh, no bright followers. I mean, come on, they're ghouls who want to fly to space to land on a new planet in 300-year-old spaceships. 
I don't know, did you see those murderous old ladies? The learned soldier, meanwhile, thinks that your right to criticise others' fashion senses was revoked the instant you started running around in leopard print pyjamas and a fedora. It's the post-apocalypse. It's a different standard of fashion. Also, plus one to charisma. Like me, Plays HD is shocked and appalled, saying, I will never forgive Bethesda for what they have done to Harold's character. What Bethesda did, right. <laughs> Finally this week, your comments on our playthrough of the final mission from The Escapists The Walking Dead, Alexandria. All right, what have you got, Carl? Your lighter's right here in the desk, you little oh, idiot. Oh, asshole, Carl. Sent me all the way over there. <laughs> he's like, well, oh, he's like, oh yeah, I forgot. I it's either left it in a desk <laughs> or, or a zombie, zombie took zombie. it. I can't remember. Hate you so much, Carl. Much like us, XD North has had enough of Carl's nonsense, saying, Dad, can you get my lighter? I either left it in my desk or on a long, treacherous, agonizing, tedious quest. You know, one of the two. You should probably go on the quest first. <sighs> God damn it, Carl. Oh, this is zombie great. parked on this top of the This is zombie right on top of the- Yeah, fair enough. Okay, well maybe that was a bit ambitious for the first quest. Oh no! What? Carl died. Carl died. Well. Ty Campbell was as disappointed as I was, saying, I was really hoping you'd be able to shoot the toast from the toaster to distract them. Yeah, maybe we would have got out alive if you'd used just a little bit of ingenuity, Rick. They want toast, right? Really? Zombies. Got if I put the toaster they here, want toast. they're like, ah, oh, let's go and get that delicious That's toast. Be a great zombie I think they're more inching towards the. They actually need moving towards <laughs> the <laughs> Sam Soren, meanwhile, notes that Mike went all aggro this and aggro that. Looks like Jane's conspiracy to drag both guys into the world of MMORPGs is going well. Now, now can you grab the lighter without there. aggroing every single one of those, like, <laughs> five zombies? All right. That's ridiculous. All I was doing was kiting a zombie around so I could get a crit. Right, because Rick's got such low decks and therefore terrible DPS. Right. All right, I've got to go because I've been power leveling through trash mobs and now I'm LFG for raids. Nice. That's it for show of the week, but Mike said you weren't cool enough to press the like button. Are you going to take that from him? Prove him wrong. I never actually said anything. Prove any... him wrong. Thanks for watching. See you next week. All right, do you want to go get some lunch? No, I've got mine. Um, tiny cheese? You know what? I'm, I'm good, actually.